Hey everyone, this is Steve from GamersNexus.net and today we're benchmarking single channel versus dual channel configurations for memory on compatible platforms. I wrote a very detailed 5,000 word article to accompany this test that includes a full detail breakdown of how these benchmarks work and how they apply to your uses in the real world. But the video will focus more on Adobe After Effects performance and sort of skim over the other results. What we're testing here today is the statement that you need to buy RAM in pairs of two, else you're significantly hampering the system. That is what we're testing. That's sort of the myth. Uh, I, I bought into it for a very long time, and I was personally invested in learning the results. There are a couple tests out there, but I wasn't satisfied with them. My hypothesis going into this is that I'd have a significant impact on video editing, but would be negligible elsewhere. So we'll see if that was correct going forward. The backstory here is that we met with MSI at their HQ in 2013 in July during our California tour. And, uh, and this is also, by the way, where we show how RAM was made. So hit that link if you are interested. They showed us some new laptops that all shipped with a single stick of 8 gigabytes of RAM. And at the time, I pressed and asked why they would opt for that. Because to me, why would you sacrifice dual channel performance? That was kind of my thinking. So why not go with 2 times 4 gigabytes, for instance? They said that they first of all it was a little cheaper and they found no noticeable difference between dual and single channel configurations when testing internally so i i returned home i did some lightweight testing and got results that appeared in line with this but it wasn't at all comprehensive i wasn't happy with leaving it there so we're returning now before diving in i want everyone to make note that there is no such thing as quote dual channel ram or dual channel memory or single channel ram or single channel memory before you call me an idiot in the comments, which happens quite frequently without any research, uh, I'm not bitter, let me, let me explain where I'm coming from. There are dual channel and single channel platforms, but the memory itself isn't made in a special way, nor does it contain some sort of special flippable bit that enables a so-called dual channel mode on the memory. For this reason, unless I slip up because I've been running tests for 18 hours, you will never hear me say the words dual channel memory without following it up with the words platform or configuration. That's pretty important when you're talking about this. Dual channel memory is not a standalone item that exists. It's just memory. So hopefully that clears things up. I want to get that out of the way first. There are some special cases where you enter higher channel counts like quad channel or octa channel where the memory will actually exhibit fairly substantive differences uh, as you increase channel count. And that's because of a lot of things, including uh, and primarily the higher density, like in the range of 64 gigabits, per, for example. So that's that's pretty impactful for your performance and isn't necessarily uh, quite as easy as the dual channel stuff we're talking about here today. When you're using a single stick of RAM, the memory will communicate via a 64-bit wide data channel. The channel can effectively be thought of as a lane on a road with 64 bits of total width in a single channel. We're more limited in our maximum throughput than a wider channel or multiple channels will allow, just like a multi-lane road, using that analogy. Dual channel platforms, which all modern IMCs and chipsets support, sans Cavini, will utilize two 64-bit channels instead of one, effectively doubling the maximum potential data rate of our memory as it communicates with the CPU, assuming you've used a multiple of, of two sticks. This sort of pin pawns our data down the channels, so we've now introduced parallelism to the memory by multiplying the channel count. This applies all the way up the line. If you've got quad channel RAM, multiply your channel count by four and so on. This is easy to confuse with double data rate RAM or DDR, so be careful to make that distinction. It's, it's a different thing. They operate independently of each other. And uh, dual channel configurations can only be utilized when the RAM is socketed in matching banks, like bank zero on most boards. Some boards will support dual channel configurations in both banks. Uh, in our testing, in order to retain a consistent memory capacity, we used bank zero for dual channel configurations. That'd be slots one and three or, or zero and two, depending on how you count it. And uh, we used mismatched banks for what we'll call single channel testing, meaning slots one and two or three and four or whatever. All right, so enough of that. If you want more information like this, hit the article link below and that'll tell you all the technical stuff. It'll answer almost all your questions. And let's just dive into benchmarks right away here. The test platform and complete test methodology are, uh, are pretty fleshed out again in the link. 
If you'd like to run the test yourself and replicate my results, I've tried to enable this and I encourage it. Please post a comment in the article if you do some of your, of your own testing because I'd, I'd love to include it in our results in the future. We'll start with Euler 3D. Euler 3D is a computational fluid dynamics benchmark, shortened as CFD bench. Uh, I'll read directly from my article here because it does a pretty good job at explaining it. Euler 3D is a simulation benchmark. Simulation like this is a computation intensive task that tends to demand high speed components and multi-threaded processing. So CPU and RAM get hammered. CFD uses a computer model to calculate fluid flow, which is air in this case. And my understanding, I, I haven't, I didn't program this. I am not an expert on CFD. My understanding is that the test uses a complex matrix to calculate fluid flow at multiple points on whatever we're testing, and it then iterates over time with change in flow at surrounding points. So this in mind, it would mean that we have to store some values and then access them upon each iteration, which becomes more and more RAM intensive in terms of speed as the test iterates. The results here showed a 17.7% differential between single and dual channel platforms that were tested, which is pretty damn substantial. If you're doing anything with simulation or similar engineering, like uh, parametric modeling or something, it is reasonable to presume that you could extrapolate the data to those applications. Um, then there's max mem. This one benchmarks memory copy, read, write, latency, and bandwidth. And you can see here that our deltas were upwards of 30% with the exception of memory latency, which was a couple nanoseconds worse on the dual channel platform. This is likely due to overhead and is insubstantial. This is an entirely synthetic benchmark, so it's tough to say how it relates to the real world, but that's what I'm here for. So let's move on to real world stuff. WinRAR is something that you're all familiar with. We ran a WinRAR compression test to calculate the advantage of running two memory channels when archiving data. In our test, we see a difference of approximately 2.87%, which isn't really that impactful for consumers. Keep in mind that this sort of 3% advantage toward dual channel could be a seriously important boon to enterprise and server or database solutions where archiving massive log files or indexes on an hourly or faster basis would demand any small gains that it can get. Of course, these systems will also be utilizing server architecture and are probably on far more channels than two, but you get the idea. Now we're on Handbrake. Handbrake starts showing some advantages for power users on PCs, that'd be enthusiasts, rather than just developers and scientists like the previous tests. Handbrake transcodes video from one format to another and is often used for ripping or converting video files and is multi-threaded enabled, making it good for this test. In our test, Handbrake saw a 4.4% advantage with dual channel configurations, which is starting to get somewhat noticeable. Now for gaming benchmarks, and, and then we'll move on to video editing, I promise. Uh, I didn't expect any noticeable difference here at all, but I tested it for point of clarity to, to kind of make a point. Shogun 2's benchmark tested for a load time advantage of only 0.78% for dual channel configurations, while the FPS tested at a 0.21% increase on dual channel. You generally won't see FPS increases uh, in this regard with memory, but that's another that's another topic for a much longer article. Both of these numbers are well within margin of error. They're less than 1% and should be regarded as insubstantial. I also tested load times and FPS in Skyrim and found similarly low numbers, as in less than 1% delta, and I tested it in Battlefield 4, but it, it, the test is yet inconclusive. So far, uh, they are insubstantial, but I need to, need to finish a few things. So this gives us the conclusion that at least these two or three games will not see direct benefit of dual channel platforms, and we could probably extrapolate that to most games. Here's where you see some video from my tests. For Adobe Premiere, I rendered out this very complex 10 second clip featuring four 1080p scenes at 60 FPS with a 28 megabit per second frame rate. I filmed all four of these and dropped them into this window. You can see that there is a rough 3% delta favoring dual channel here. It's noteworthy, and if you're doing this sort of work, you should probably be running multiple sticks anyway. But even with the 3% difference, uh, that's only two minutes shaved off of every hour you spend rendering, so it's completely up to you to determine whether that's beneficial or not. Uh, for me, it can actually be pretty beneficial when I'm at a convention and rendering, you know, 20 hours a day. But 
still, we're, we're looking at minutes here. Uh, so now for After Effects, Adobe's AE has what is called a RAM preview that streams video data to memory for live playback with post-processing added in live. That's the key. In this demo, I created another reel with four scenes at 1080p running 60 FPS with a rough 28 megabit per second frame rate, 24 in some cases. This is the, the dual channel test we're looking at. The average frame rate of playback, including color correction and exposure post-processing, spits out at 15.1 FPS for dual channel configs and 14.2 FPS for my single channel config. The delta here is almost 6% which could absolutely be a big deal for those of you who regularly do this kind of work. So what's our conclusion for all of this? Well, here's the thing. Generally, it's cost effective to buy memory in kits. However, if you're on an ultra budget, say less than $500, and you see a single stick of RAM that's maybe eight gigabytes and you know something absurd like $50, uh, FSM forbid that is a price available now then it's a don't freak out about losing the dual channel capabilities you can get by on one stick if you're quote unquote just a gamer right it it has very little impact as we've seen the places it becomes relevant is largely going to be outside of the realm of this audience they're going to be uh, server architects and enterprise and web solutions and databases and things that do really regular archiving or require redundancy or require very rapid accessing of data. But on the enthusiast side, ignoring all things aesthetic, it is somewhat beneficial for a render rig if you're doing a lot of rendering. If you are a scientist or you do a lot of simulations or you're an engineer and you work with parametrics and analyzers and signal integrity and electromagnetics, it's definitely useful to have it there, just judging by the Euler 3D test. So that's kind of where I stand on all this. Uh, just to really make things clear, if you are a gamer, if it's out of your price range, don't go out of the way to get a dual channel configuration going. So I know we blasted through those numbers very fast and you've probably got a lot of questions as to how I validated everything and how I tested it. But fear not, the test case was very extensive and attempted to answer all those questions and my own concerns along the way. I did have quite a few uh, concerns going into the test that I wanted to address. So hit the link again in the description below for that, not to, not to verbally spam you with the link, but it is very comprehensive. And that's all for this time. If you like this sort of content, please like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what else you want to see in terms of PC myths, we'll call them. And I will see you all next time. Peace.